In this question, we have a setup where we have a block that is connected to another block and there is an applied force and we are told that there is an acceleration to the left. So we can be 100% sure that this system is going in that direction. They've also given us some friction. And so let's start. It says, define the term normal force in words. Normal force is the perpendicular force exerted by a surface on an object on the surface. So let me explain. If you have an object, I mean a, a surface, and you have an object, then the normal force is always at 90 degrees to the surface. So it's always perpendicular, like that. That's where we get perpendicular from and it's exerted by the surface on the object which is on the surface okay and even if you are on a slope the normal force is always going to be by the surface and it's perpendicular to the object that is on the surface and perpendicular we know means 90 degrees okay question 2.2.1 calculate the tension in the string so the tension in the string would be somewhere over here I'm going to show you a way that you can handle all of these types of questions. If you've ever seen some of my other videos, then what you would observe is that what I typically do in these types of questions where we have two objects is I do a free body diagram on each object. So let's do that. So I'm going to put a dotted line going down the middle of my page and then I'm going to do um, the 260 gram object over here and then the M object over there. So let's start with M, or let's, no, let's start with the 260 gram. The 260 gram, and remember we're moving in this direction because they told us we're accelerating to the left. So you can't say that this one's going down and this one's going to the left. A lot of students do that, it doesn't make sense. You've got to go like that. So this means we're going upwards. So there is a tension force in the rope and then there is a gravitational force. That is the only two forces acting on that object. Some students like to say, yeah, but what about the 60 Newton? That 60 Newton force is not touching the 260 gram, so we don't include it. They are only these two forces. Right, now let's do a free body diagram on M. So M has got some friction. They did tell us that. They said that there was a coefficient then there's also the tension force that's trying to slow it down. So we can just draw another little, just make a nice big dot. So that's your tension force over there. Then there's gravity. There's the normal force. And there's an applied force, which is at an angle. Now you can choose to do it like this. You can go F applied in the X direction and F applied in the y direction. I like that approach. It, it's, it's much better. But you can also do it like this. You can say that there is tension, um, friction, then you can say that there is an applied force at that angle like that. So you can do that. And then you can say gravity and then normal force. Okay, so you can choose any of those two methods. I'm gonna stick with this one over here. I think a lot of students just prefer that and it just makes more sense. Okay, what I then tell students to do is you're going to use F net equals to MA on, on these two situations. So you would use F net equals to MA and F net equals to MA. However, usually they don't give us acceleration. And so what usually happens is after you go do F net equals to MA on both of these, you would then link them together simultaneously. But in this question, we are given the acceleration. So we don't have to go do the F net equals to MA for this one because it's just going to be too long and difficult. I mean, look how, look, how many, um, look how many forces we would have to consider. Whereas this one is super simple. Check this out, guys. We use F net equals MA on that one. We say that up is positive. And then the only forces is tension, which we don't know. 
gravity is just going to be the mass multiplied by 9.8. Now remember this is in grams, so you'd want to say 0 0.26 for the mass times by 9.8. And then that's equal to the mass, which is 0 0.26 grams. And then once again, the acceleration, 2.89, which they've given us. And there we go. Look how easy that is. There we can work out the tension. And so I'm just going to take everything over to the right hand side, type it all in in the calculator in one step, and we should get a tension force of 3.30 newtons if you round it to two decimal places. Okay, so that was quite easy. So that's, that's why it was only three marks. But just remember that if they didn't give us acceleration, then this would typically be worth a lot more and you would have to use F net equals MA on both of these and then you would do some type of simultaneous scenario. Okay, so for the next question, we have to calculate the mass. And so we would definitely go use F net equals to MA and let's choose our direction as positive so we can say to the left as positive and so let's see the different forces that we would have to consider in that direction would be the applied force in the horizontal direction tension and friction and so let's go start with that so the applied force i'm going to i'm going to break it down very i'm going to try to make it very easy for you guys the applied force in the x direction you would have to make a little triangle for yourself and if you're looking for x and you already have the hypotenuse of 60, you would have to use cos. So you would say that cos of 10 degrees is equal to x over 60. And then you would get 60 alone by saying, um, I mean, you'd get x alone by saying 60 cos 10. But now don't round off. So I'm just going to keep it as 60 cos 10 for now, because otherwise we're going to round off and then we might not get the exact same answer that they get. Um, so we just say 60 cos 10. That's the applied force in the horizontal direction. Right, now the tension force, we already worked that out in the previous question. And what we said was 3.30 newtons. Now friction is, friction is always equal to the kinetic coefficient multiplied by the normal force. And they've given us the coefficient but now the normal force is a bit interesting because what a lot of students do, they always say that the normal force is the same as the weight. But remember, we even looked at this, if you looked at question one of this exam paper with me, um, we said that normal force is not always the same as the weight. And, and I'll prove it to you. The weight is this one, which is gravity. Then the normal force and the applied force in the y direction are both going upwards. So these two, should be the exact same as gravity, okay? So let me say that gravity, in this case, is the same as the normal force plus the applied force in the y direction because it has to all balance out. So these two balance out this one. Then we know what gravity is and we can easily work out the y component. And so what we'll find is that the normal force is going to be equal to gravity minus the y component. Now to work out the y component, you would also use this little triangle, but you would end up using sin. And so you would eventually get that that's equal to x, I mean 60 sin 10. Okay, so if we had to go work out the normal force now, you would say normal force is equal to gravity, which is 0 0.26, sorry, that's the wrong object. <laughs> you would say mass times 9.8 which we don't know the mass, but that's okay, minus 60 sin 10. And so now we have all three forces that we need. And so we can go fill that in now. So we can say that this is going to be FAX. And so now going into F net equals MA, we can just say that it's the applied force in the horizontal direction minus the tension minus the friction because we're going to the left. And then that's equal to MA. So the applied force in the horizontal direction is just going to be 60 cos 10. The tension force we worked out. And then the friction force is the coefficient, which is 0 0.3. And then the normal force is quite a long expression. It's all of this over here. So that's 9.8 M minus 60 sin 10. And then that's equal to the mass, which we don't know, times by the acceleration, which is still going to be 2.89.
Okay, and so now what we can do is we can just simplify a little bit. So I'm going to type this on the calculator, but I'm not going to round off to two decimal places just yet. I'm going to keep at least, I don't know, I'll keep four decimal places. Some people like to store the answer in their calculator. You can do that as well. So you can go 7, 8, 8, 4. Uh, I'm going to keep the first five decimals. Minus, and then I'm going to multiply this inside. So that's going to become minus 0 0.3 times 9.8 which is 2.94, that does round off to m, I mean, mat times the mass, plus, because this becomes a plus, 0 0.3 times 60 sin 10, and that I'm going to keep five decimals, so that's 3.12566, and then that's equal to um, 2.89m. And so great, we can see that the only thing that we have as the unknown is m, and so I'm going to put these two expressions together and I'm going to take the 2.94 over to the other side where it will become a positive. And so that's going to give us 58.91412 equals to 2.89m plus 2.94m. And so on the right hand side, we get 5.83m. And on the left, 58.91412 and then you obviously just divide and we should get a final mass of 10.11 kilograms.